These are 15 more tech trends shaping 2027. Picking up right where part one left off. Number 15, sustainable nanotechnology. If you've ever wondered what science looks like when it shrinks down to the size of a few atoms, nanotech in 2027 is exactly that. Researchers are building materials that clean water faster, targets diseases more precisely, and use far less energy than conventional solutions. There are nanofiltration membranes already removing contaminants like heavy metals and microplastics in real pilot projects across Asia and Europe. Hospitals are experimenting with nanoparticle drug delivery that releases medicine only where it's needed, instead of flooding the whole body. Number 14. Space-Based Manufacturing Space isn't just for satellites anymore. We're stepping into a world where companies want to manufacture things off the planet because microgravity changes how materials form. NASA and private partners like Varda Space Industries have already run microgravity manufacturing tests for pharmaceuticals and fiber optics. Varda even launched a capsule that successfully returned drugs crystallized in space, something researchers hope can improve purity and performance. In orbit, crystals grow without gravity pulling them down, so they form more uniformly. That means stronger metals, cleaner semiconductors, and medical compounds that behave differently than anything made on Earth. Number 13, Industrial Metaverse. Forget the cartoon avatars you see in consumer metaverse demos. The industrial version is all about real factories being simulated in virtual space. Companies like Siemens and NVIDIA are creating digital environments where engineers can test machinery, redesign workflows, and run safety scenarios before touching a single physical object. BMW's been using these virtual factories to plan assembly lines with fewer errors and faster iterations. It's basically a sandbox for industry, letting teams experiment without breaking real equipment. And because it's all connected to live data, a change in the digital model can update real factory settings instantly. Number 12. Web3 Decentralized Economies Web3's buzz might have cooled off a bit, but the underlying technology hasn't stopped evolving. Governments and banks in Europe and Asia are testing blockchain-based systems for things like land registries, carbon tracking, and cross-border payments. Meanwhile, decentralized autonomous organizations, or DAOs, are being used in community projects where members vote directly on budgets and decisions. Real estate tokenization is another space getting attention, letting people buy fractions of property through blockchain records. It's not replacing traditional finance anytime soon, but it's creating parallel systems that offer transparency, shared ownership, and new forms of governance. Number 11. Digital Twins for Mega Infrastructure Digital twins are basically living virtual models that mirror real-world systems. And right now, they're being used for everything from airports to power grids. Singapore has one of the largest national digital twin projects, mapping buildings, transportation networks, and utilities so planners can run simulations before making changes. In aviation, companies use digital twins to predict engine wear, reducing maintenance costs and downtime. Utility companies in the U.S. and Europe run virtual grid models to forecast load during extreme weather. It sounds technical, but it's already behind some of the biggest engineering decisions happening today. Number 10. Explainable AI as AI gets woven into healthcare, finance, transportation, and public services, there's growing pressure for systems that can actually explain their decisions. Hospitals testing diagnostic AI need to know why a model flagged a pattern on a scan. Banks using automated risk tools must show regulators how those scores are generated. That's where explainable AI comes in. Instead of a black box outcome, it breaks down which factors influenced a prediction. Research groups in the US and EU are working on frameworks that make these explanations more consistent so organizations can deploy AI without running into compliance issues. 
Before we move on, a quick note you might find useful if you're a creator or studying how YouTube channels grow. There's a tool called Overseer OS that analyzes channels and breaks down what's actually driving their performance. Almost like a behind the scenes map of what's working. Some creators use it to study patterns across niches instead of guessing. If you're curious, there's a link in the description where you can check it out. Number nine, clean energy expansion. Clean energy isn't slowing down. In the last couple years, solar and wind became the cheapest sources of new electricity in many regions, according to the International Energy Agency. Countries are upgrading grids with large-scale battery storage, which helps store excess energy instead of wasting it. The U.S. and Europe are rolling out AI systems that predict demand spikes and adjust distribution in real time. China is also expanding ultra-high voltage transmission lines that move renewable power across long distances. Number 8. Cloud Edge Convergence Cloud and edge computing are starting to feel like one system instead of two separate layers. Think of AI models running partly in the cloud and partly on your device, depending on what's faster. Telecom companies are deploying edge data centers near cities so apps like autonomous vehicles, AR navigation, or emergency response tools can get millisecond level latency. Amazon, Google, and Microsoft are expanding hybrid platforms where devices process process quick decisions on the edge, while tasks like training models still happen in the cloud. This blend is what makes real-time AI experiences possible at scale. Number 7. Synthetic Biology and Biomanufacturing Synthetic biology is moving from research labs into real manufacturing pipelines. Teams can now design microbes that produce everything, from biodegradable plastics to specialty chemicals. Companies like Ginkgo Bioworks and Zymergen have been engineering organisms for industrial use, and pharmaceutical partners are experimenting with yeast strains that produce complex drug ingredients more sustainably than traditional methods. The Department of Energy even supports biomanufacturing hubs to scale these processes in the United States. It's a field where software meets biology, letting scientists program cells the way developers write code. But for products that traditionally relied on petroleum or resource-heavy extraction. Number 6. Cyber Resilient Security Ecosystems Cybersecurity threats are getting more complex as everything moves online which is why organizations are shifting to AI-assisted defense systems. Instead of reacting to breaches, these tools scan network behavior continuously and spot anomalies before they escalate. Companies like CrowdStrike, Google Cloud, and Microsoft are integrating machine learning into threat detection so systems can adapt to new attack patterns faster than human analysts. Critical infrastructure sectors, including energy and healthcare, are tightening monitoring after high-profile ransomware incidents in recent years. The focus now is resilience, not just prevention, because the volume of attacks keeps rising globally. Number 5. Ultra-Personalized AI Education Platforms Education is becoming far more adaptive than the old one-size-fits-all model. AI tutors can adjust difficulty, pacing, and explanations based on how each student responds in real time. Khan's Academy's Comingo, for example, is being tested in classrooms as a writing coach and math companion, offering step-by-step -step guidance without giving away answers. Large school districts in the U.S. and pilot programs in South Korea are experimenting with AI-powered learning dashboards that track strengths and weaknesses across different subjects. It it doesn't replace teachers, but it gives them data-driven insight to support each student more precisely. Number 4. Neuromorphic Computing Neuromorphic chips are built to work more like a brain than a traditional processor, and researchers have been making real progress. Intel's LoHi 2, for example, can run certain AI workloads with significantly lower power than conventional GPUs because it processes information through spiking neural networks. IBM has also demonstrated neuromorphic architectures aimed at real-time pattern recognition. These systems aren't mainstream 
yet, but they're showing promise for robotics, drones, and edge devices where power efficiency matters. The big idea is simple. Instead of brute force computing, you get hardware that learns and adapts more naturally. Number three, photonic computing. Photonic computing uses light instead of electricity, which gives it a huge advantage in speed and heat reduction. Light Matter, a Boston-based startup, has already built photonic chips designed for AI inference, and they've partnered with major cloud providers to test them in data centers. Researchers report that optical interconnects can handle higher bandwidth with far lower energy loss than copper wiring. Companies working on next-generation AI hardware are exploring hybrids that combine photonic cores with traditional silicone. If this scales, it could help be the massive energy demands of AI training and open the door to faster, cooler, high-performance systems. Number two, agentic AI systems. Agentic AI goes beyond answering questions. It performs tasks on its own. You've probably seen early versions and tools that can plan steps, execute actions online, and adjust when something changes. OpenAI, Google, and Anthropic have all demonstrated agents that can book travel, draft documents, search the web, or manage schedules with minimal supervision. In software development, agents can already write and test small code snippets automatically. Companies are experimenting with these systems and customer support and research workflows, but always with human oversight. The direction is clear, though. AI is shifting from reactive to active participation in daily digital workflow. Number one, quantum internet foundations. Quantum networking is one of the most ambitious projects underway right now, and several countries are building early infrastructure. The United States, the Netherlands, China, and Japan have demonstrated quantum communication links using entangled photons to transmit information securely over increasing distances. The U.S. Department of Energy has even outlined a roadmap for a nationwide quantum internet connecting national labs through quantum repeaters. China has a functioning quantum communication line between Beijing and Shanghai with ongoing upgrades. It's still early, but these experiments are laying the groundwork for networks that could enable ultra-secure communication and new types of sensing technologies. If you made it this far, share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to watch part one to complete the series. And just a quick reminder, the Overseer link is in the description if you want to check it out. Thanks for watching.